Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Witcher Season 3. Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri are on the run, hiding from the turmoil of the continent in this cute little winter Airbnb. And for a while it is wonderful times as Papa G, Mama Yenners, and Little CC get to live as a happy found family. But war looms on the horizon between the Northern Kingdoms, who want Ciri for political reasons as the heir to the Kingdom of Sintra, and the invading Empire of Nilfgaard, who we learned at the end of last season the Emperor Amir, the White Flame, is Ciri's father. The elves are currently aligned with Nilfgaard, but they want Ciri for their own reasons because they think she's their special prophecy kid that'll lead them to the promised land, and also hunting Ciri is the mysterious supernatural wild hunt! But they only show up in one scene this season, and uh, no more about them is explained. But the most immediate threat hunting Ciri is the fire mage Rience. One day he catches up to her, but oh it was a trap! Geralt and Yennefer waiting for him, he has to retreat. But now what's this? It's a double trap as the elves have caught up to Ciri too. She would probably help them if they ask nicely, but instead they're coming to kidnap her, and Geralt's having none of that, it turns into an epic fight! Remember, the leader of the elves is the sorceress Francesca, but sexy mohawk elf thinks he knows better. He's become good friends with the Nilfgaard guy, Kahir, so they go to see the Emperor together, like, hey, I should lead the elves. But Kahir's in the doghouse right now for lying to the Emperor at the end of last season, so it's like, hey, if you want my trust back, you gotta earn it. He didn't like the mohawk vibe and orders Kahir to kill his friend. Good job, son, I'm proud of ya, but now Kahir's feeling conflicted. Over in the northern kingdom of Redania, a main character this season is the buff old guy, the spy master Dijkstra, who's working with the sorceress Philippa. The king is kind of a doofus who's unconcerned with the brewing Nilfgaard war. In fact, his queen thinks he should ally with Nilfgaard, but now Nilfgaard sends his queen's head in a box. Yeah, King, I told you, Nilfgaard can't be trusted, but turns out it was Dijkstra who killed the queen, so he's a shady guy. Meanwhile, Philippa visits Geralt's best friend, the Bard Yaskier, to threaten him into giving up Ciri. The king's brother, Radovid, wanted to tag along, and he takes a lighter touch. Hey man, I'm a huge fan. And long story short, these two start flirting, and yeah, they maybe fall in love. Now back to our Witcher, Geralt, who is occasionally still on this show. Also occasionally, a monster shows up, but it's Ciri who takes point, Geralt's been training her in how to be a witcher, and she's gotten real good, takes this thing out herself. She also has magic, and Yennefer's been teaching her how to use it, so Ciri's becoming quite the powerhouse. So Geralt is hunting that fire mage, Rience, but in his lair, he's been doing experiments on young women, all oh, sewed their bodies together, Elden Ring style. He manages to save one, what's your name, kid? But she thinks she is Ciri. Her mind's been enchanted. This kind of magic is too powerful for Rience. He must be working with a stronger sorcerer, and not just his boss with the messed up face. She's just the go-between for someone real strong in the Brotherhood. Yes, the Brotherhood of Sorcerers for a long time has been dominated by old douchebags like Stragobor, but the good guy Vilgefortz is trying to make things better, along with Yennefer's mama bear Tissaia, and remember, these two are in love. So Yennefer comes back to the Brotherhood and convinces them to throw an epic party in the name of Northern Unity. But it's just a cover for her and Geralt to uncover the real villain, and they're pretty sure it's Stragobor. They get some help from their friends, Triss Marigold and Istrid. She figured out the missing apprentices were all half-elven, and he's hunting down a book on monoliths that someone stole from the restricted section. Remember, Istrid was Yennefer's his college boyfriend, so Geralt picks a fight with him that distracts Stragobor and lets Yennefer sneak into his room. She finds some evidence of the missing girls, and Istrid finds the monolith book, so jigs up Stragobor, we caught you red-handed. Stragobor confesses to being a racist old bastard who hates elves and thinks that the mudbloods should be banned from Hogwarts. So after the party, Geralt and Yen take in a bath like, wow, that was easy. Was it too easy? And the episode goes back to show the party from a few different angles where everyone has some secret agenda. In the end, their clue is to say a seashell bracelet that Vilgefortz gave her. Yeah, nice guy, Vilgefortz. Vilgefortz is the big bad. But before Geralt can kill him, Dijkstra is one step ahead. He and Philippa captured all the hungover sorcerers because they knew Vilgefortz was working for Nilfgaard, so they're doing a brotherhood coup. But they missed Tissaia, who's a real powerful mage and breaks all her friends out of handcuffs, and the mages did not appreciate this rude awakening. But now Vilgefortz reveals he is the villain, and he doesn't love Tissaia, he was playing her this whole time, so they break up. And now it's time for coup round two, as he lets in a bunch of Nilfgaard elves. But the brotherhood's ready to defend their home, and so it's a big Harry Potter battle. Tissaia tries to kill their leader Francesca, but her boyfriend jumps in front of it. Ow, oh, Philobandrel. Now Francesca's real mad, so she tears down their big chandelier. Then Tissaia goes for a real big spell. Force lightning. Pew, pew, pew. But in the end, a bunch of the elves are still standing, so who's this busted in? It's old man Stragobor. Killing elves, now this is a party, and he saves the day with the power of racism. Our main characters were not here for any of this excitement. Rience caught up to Ciri again, so Yennefer throws the sword for an alley-oop. Oh. But now Kahir finds Ciri too, and he's the one who led the attack on her hometown Sintra, so she's real mad, goes to kill him. But he immediately surrenders. Yeah, he's kind of realized that maybe Nilfgaard's the bad guys, and I feel real bad for hurting you, Ciri, so I pledge myself to you. So Ciri's confused and lets him run away. Meanwhile, Istrid found the monolith book, but Vilgefortz caught up to him and bamfed him back to his secret lair. And now Vilgefortz is coming for Ciri, but Geralt's here to protect her, and so it's the fight! Yeah, yeah! Vilgefortz has the magic staff that can teleport to either hand, 
Now, Vilgefortz was thought to be like a mid-tier sorcerer, but now he reveals he's been hiding his true power all along. Oh, he's like one of the strongest sorcerers ever. With his magic staff, he breaks Geralt's sword and then breaks Geralt's back and leaves him alive as a warning. Meanwhile, Ciri has wandered over to the magic tower, which turns out inside is a big monolith, but this one's got like writing on it. Vilgefortz is like, Ciri, I want to help you learn to use your powers, but she's like, I figured it out enough and blows them both up. Ciri is teleported to the middle of a desert, and if you like hour-long episodes of Wandering the Desert, you're in luck. She hallucinates her grandma being mean to her, then hallucinates a mysterious robed woman who turns out is kind of real. She is Ciri's ancient ancestor, Falca, who is like part elf and cursed the whole world and wants Ciri to bring about the apocalypse. Her reasoning is, if the current world order is evil, then destroying the world is the good thing to do. So she's trying to push Ciri to the dark side, and it sounds pretty nice having the power to destroy your enemies. But Ciri has the vision that she would end up killing her friends too, and she's like, oh no, I reject it. When she wakes up, she's found by bounty hunters, but at least she's out of the desert. Now Tasea is very depressed and she kills herself. No, Mama Bear! So Yennefer gathers what's left of the Brotherhood, but it's basically just her class of sorceresses. Well then, girls, it's time for a rebrand. I guess we'll be the Sisterhood now. By the way, the Nilfgaard sorceress Frangilla is back. Remember last season when someone killed the elf baby and Frangilla took credit to gain favor with the Emperor, but it was Amir himself who had the baby killed, so he knew she was lying and punished her. They pinned it on the Northern Kingdom so the elves would fight for Nilfgaard, but now Frangilla tells her the truth and Francesca's gonna be real mad at Nilfgaard. Over in Redania, Dijkstra's in trouble because his brotherhood coup failed. The king orders him to kill Philippa, but he loves her. You could kill me instead. She's like, oh, boo, that's sweet, but unnecessary. I've already made plans to have the king assassinated. And she immediately crowns his brother Radovid, who hopefully she and Dijkstra can manipulate better. Now back to our witcher, Geralt of Rivia, who is occasionally still on this show. His dryad friends are trying to heal him, but he keeps running off to try to rescue Ciri. He makes a new friend, Milva, who convinces him he's in no shape to fight and agrees to help train him to get back into shape. And after a little training montage, yeah, Geralt is back in fighting for now, word on the street is that Nilfgaard finally captured Ciri, but oh, it's the imposter Ciri. It seems like Vilgefortz is trying to trick the Emperor, and yeah, by the way, his face is now super scarred after the obelisk explosion, but he must not know that Amir is Ciri's father and immediately recognizes this ain't his daughter. The real Ciri is still captured by bounty hunters, and she makes friends with her other captive because his friends are coming to rescue him. Yes, apparently they're a gang called the Rats, and they're a bunch of fun misfits who are top-tier fighters. Their leader gives Ciri an audition to join him, and yeah, she makes short work of this guy, but she's only ever killed months before, this was her first human murder. And when they're like, yo girl, what's your name? She gives her evil ancestor's name, call me Falca. But Geralt thinks she's still in Nilfgaard, and when crossing the border, the guards harass this family, and Geralt's gone on his character arc, I can't be neutral anymore, I have to stand up for good. So Geralt fights a dozen guards. Yeah, he's basically fully healed. His new friend Milva's here to help too. She's gonna join on this adventure for her own reasons. And Yaskir is still here. Uh, he helps a bit too. And so our witcher, Geralt of Rivia, ventures forth to rescue Ciri. Although apparently Henry Cavill is leaving the show, so next time you see him, he'll look different. And that's where The Witcher Season 3 comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.